Good morning, everybody. I am Wendy Nystrom, your host with Environmental Social Justice. Today's guest is Mr. Vikram Shetty. He is the co-founder of 73bit.com. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Wendy, for having me a guest in this show. Absolutely. And when, you know, you and I kind of met over diversity, equity, and inclusion, and how important it is not for people just to understand what it means, but to further our economy the way it's looking nowadays. And you started 73Bit to specifically help people with DEI. Could you explain what it is you guys do and, and why it's so important? Sure. Uh, so 73Bit uh, is a software company and we offer uh, a very specific assessment and benchmark software uh, in the space of complete sustainability and DEI is one of the S, the S of the ESG as they say, comes into it. And many uh, of our clients use our tool to do uh, diversity and inclusion. And uh, that, I mean, we might need a whole episode to explain why diversity and inclusion is important, but I will pick the couple of uh, big, big topics uh, the the pay gap is the gender pay gap is the mm -hmm. big thing we need at least 150 years uh, that's awful like if if we need 150 years to bridge the gap that's uh, for the whole that's slow. Uh, yeah <laughs> i don't even want to get started there so that <laughs> is kind of uh, the main uh, starting point or like that was the buzz around when sdg was coined and during that time and uh, we started as a project for indexes as such but over the period of time we kind of uh, saw that there is a lot of data missing in the whole space when it comes to diversity and inclusion and uh, when, with where the technology has uh, skyrocketed in last 20 years everyone knows some there are so many first time for last 20 years the first mobile phone first uh, uh, SaaS based products and there were uh, the zoom call the virtual world all together so there's so many first time that technology has moved so fast but the gaps have not filled in so fast so that's yeah. that's where it is and uh, software and uh, data being crucial piece of this new modern world so that is where we came into picture where we found that there is a methodology of framework that can be used it's not a complete solution for diversity and inclusion but this is one of the most important or at least the first step towards the right direction and diversity and inclusion i can i will pick three reasons why diversity and inclusion are important again uh, going back if we have more uh, more women leaders in the board or more women leadership the overall equity of the society automatically uh, raises up i cannot quote studies there but there have been enough studies that has been uh, done there uh, then the uh, then the overall society's growth not only for women but uh, people of different colors and uh, people of different ethnicity different background different social economic background as well who don't have access to certain kind of educations and things like that so imagine the opportunity that is there available for businesses and uh, uh, the community as in general so th that th those would be my top two or three reasons why diversity as an inclusion is uh, important and uh, and the thing is that uh, not a single person or a single company can make a difference. We it's it's a systematic change, so we are doing our part, and that is where where we come into play is. Uh, uh, let me give you an example, uh, which I try. I, I, I hopefully that explains. So, let's go back to school. When we were in school, we used to give exams, right? So at the end of the exams, everyone writes pop quiz or multi-choice questions. End of it our teacher kind of gives us a report card or a scorecard or whatever you may call in your school and you know where you stand in english math or science so that's how we most of us who are watching this have grown now imagine those people are companies and imagine your teacher is a think tank research uh, organization or a government body or somebody who want to keep a check and balance of our society and business being one of the core keystone in the whole society scheme 
and imagine if we want to measure how the pay gap uh, for each company stands and which one is better than which and all so that scorecard is a one of the tools that you can use to measure uh, how we stand as a society what is our baseline where we want to grow and it can also help us uh, give us a map or a direction towards the bright future we all want to uh, get it. i hope that answers your question no it does beautifully and um just tying back to the original point you made a, a couple minutes ago is most people when they think of sustainability they think of the environment right. they think you know pollution contamination but a very important uh, part of it is the the s which is society people and right. as you said you know if we're key, we need to hire more people of different backgrounds different genders different ethnicities because if you still hire the same person over and over again you're not going to get any rapid change yes and we need to see that rapid change and you're providing this service and i'll dive into your scorecard could you talk about your five-day outreach and your five benefits it's so important that people track what they're doing and where they're coming from so they can make that goal right. if you're not tracking it you have no idea what you're doing <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, so let me even take a step back. All right. Now, like we both want to explain to the world why tracking is important and, uh, and how it can help. But let's say, uh, you are someone in a business or in a company who is responsible for diversity for your company. Uh, and, uh, let's say there is there is someone or let's say there is an uh, a consultant or a dia consultant who thinks as you rightly mentioned we need diverse and there are many benefits out of it and but the person in charge there is their diversity head but they they might know or not know how the scorecard will help them let's begin with that let's let's uh, let's use this five day outreach idea uh, and uh, the reason I want to talk about this idea is definitely we can go with the bigger picture, the big problem, complex problem. But I just wanted to touch the most simplest and the basic one, which anyone, anyone who even who, who, who actually interestingly, if that person is not even uh, related to diversity, they can run this experiment. It is so simple. The tools are freely available. You don't have to contact to 73 bit to purchase their tool or anything like that anybody who has an access to the computer and is able to watch this uh, podcast should is you are already equipped to do this five day outreach let me begin with that fantastic right. sure so the objective is to kind of give an insight scorecard for the head of diversity so that they can understand where to start from because it's vast they might not they don't know but you as a as a professional of diversity you have a, a interest or you have an insight of the market like you think uh, the first thing should be sol solved is uh, let's say more gen z participation let's take that for an example so what you do is you pick this company where, where whoever uh, xyz company that you want i don't want to put names and all just like trying to give you a framework in general and uh, let's say you pick a company you go you and i will just give you you go to linkedin just because everyone is in business here everyone is there on linkedin you go to that company and you can go and when you click on that company you will see all the employees of the company it's open data everyone is have access to it and you pick the gen z's from the company you pick 20 out of them i'm just giving you a random number a simple sample space so day one what you do is you pick those 20 cohorts as a like that's the general law, uh, language uh, it, it can be a jargon form it's just a group of people with similar characteristics so gen z uh, is like people who are gen generation z and uh, they are at an entry level or whatever mid-level position and you are picking a particular group and that's where you where you want to do your research with right that's what your insight you are trying to find out so that's your pick uh, the, you can go for years of experience you can go for their education background size designations you can pick your choice so once you do that that's your day one task you go there and you send them and you tell them uh, i'm just referring to my notes so that i don't miss it uh, you tell them that 
I am conducting a diversity and inclusion insert insight research, and would you be like to participate in? That's it. You send an invitation to them. You send that message and let them reply to accept it or it's an open thing. They don't know what you are trying to do. On day two, you kind of create a ten question survey. A very simple, very super niche, but the topic of your interest is something that you have to pick. and the question has to be multiple choice yes and no and a mix of it and it has to be very simple it, sh- it should n- nobody should take more than 1 uh, minute or 2 minute to fill up it should be quick 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 click 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 and submit and once you create that from the day one who you send the request in a day you will get this early adopters the people who are who want to engage with you and once they are connected you only send them to the, them because you already mentioned you are doing some research there so they are expecting you with some information to be asked further you send that link and it has to be anonymous don't take personal data we are not here to uh, kind of sell them anything or uh, do any kind of uh, marketing to them or anything it's it's pure curiosity compassion and your research mindset like you have Put your scientist hat, if I may say. So you do that, and uh, you send them the link. Uh, it's quick, and just leave them alone. Don't touch them. On the day three, you come back and design your scorecard, which we spoken about, right? Now, based on your data point, you can create a many uh, way of um, scorecard. There, there are different components to it. There is a uh, overall scores that go on the top of the page. But here you are trying to consolidate everything, so you will put basically key finding and insights based on uh, what they selected. Like so, something like uh, five out of six people have chosen this uh, X as an answer for this particular thing, or for example, uh, eight out of ten people. want to always work from home let's say that as an example for so you get and you will only get because you have chosen 20 you not everybody will be interested you will end up having 5 to 7 only people who will end up filling the survey that's a standard uh, thing but it also depends how good you are in your uh, insight and how good you are at picking people like that sampling is it, it's it's personally there is a creative juice and let's not go dive there but that's your day 3 you're not talking to your people you're just crafting your one page or two page uh score card a uh, couple of things that i would like to highlight is you can put uh uh some big numbers there you can put put percentages over there you can use colors uh i have a a free course on 73bit.com where i've kind of broken down five components again i don't know why five comes <laughs> again and again i think it's easy to uh set in your mind and i've kind of uh, put in with charts not to use and stuff like that so you can go through it it's a freely available you can get an idea by the end of that course uh so now day 4 this becomes interesting now day 4 you f- you see your data whatever is collected from your online survey tool uh mo- if most of them are filled that's good but you don't know who filled whom right because you're not collecting any personal data that's see that that's is where very, the, important. very mm-hmm. important because that shows your transparency you should never that's the reason we have not touching it for two days we we don't want to know who filled who because we don't want to put bias yeah. because see if we put we have natural bias i have natural bias that's my culture the upbringing whatever the case is but we have it is a conscious effort to keep you away from your natural bias so you go and go back to each one of them and tell them uh, have you filled the survey because you don't know and once if they say yes then it's thank tell them thank you and tell them once the scorecard is prepared i will send the final result of that scorecard so they get something back for the 5 minutes they have invested because they will understand who their peers are what they are thinking they will not come to know who exactly they are firstly but and who I, who is putting it but the consolidated like out of i out eight out of nine people have told i want to work from home so they will know okay eight from my company want to work from home that means my cohort my people i am uh, i am thinking in there so they get benefit straight out of it as an individual person right and 
as you you send them as when you follow up you send them this is a sample uh, whatever your scorecard that you prepared in day 3 you send it the link sell them the data is not updated i'm still waiting for people to fill in once it is that i will manually go and update the final score or whatever the final uh, scorecard is so this is very important because what will happen is there will be a interest that raises because till now you have been asking something this is the first time on day 4 you will be giving back something if you are lucky you will have some data and you can tell that i am doing this research for your company specifically you can share that data because that that's the company i have taken this i've only chosen gen z and with education of those and those with designation this so i've only picked these people that again interest okay i i will come to know what my peer are we are kind of wired that comparative analysis is somehow wired i hate it i, I that's an emotional word to use but uh, somehow human is ticked with it i don't know what is that once yeah. you know you are rank 2 or rank 3 somehow you get uh, charged up or whatever it is but sometime it is uh, it can be positive in a way like last year i was not so good uh, now i am good so that comparison self evaluation is good so this is also kind of a self evaluation but a group self evaluation like as my country was doing uh, not so good in happiness index but now the country is doing better that's a collective win uh, kind of a thing similarly as a group if i get some collective information that would be good for me and if it matches to my ideas my beliefs then it can and if it doesn't also you can understand okay i am different from my group so i can go on and on that but they will start get some feedback and and once you give them that scorecard and when they read it and when they visually you once you see it something happens so like they want to see oh interesting and then they might ask you some question and here is where you will start that engagement you will kind of bounce off ideas of your idea of diversity of what you think is important then you can ask them why it is important and you can kind of have this conversation this conversation is important first of all to be a student of your field right because yes i can say that as a as a programmer or i can say that i can create this design of a scorecard or a design or a website but once i kind of check bounce this idea with wendy in this case i i say that this is my scorecard this is the journey going from left hand side this is the traffic light signal uh, and i show it to wendy wendy says okay what about people who are going backward in their score how are you representing that in this score so sometimes what happens mm -hmm. is once you get this idea that is where you have to this have this openness connection with them you have your idea that they, and they are not critiquing you they are critiquing the work or your idea and it's good to have what you say like an early adopter answering it in an ideation phase so that when you go this back on do your work for day five you are uh, loaded with lot of this personalized insight you don't and that their thought process their ideas and their uh, problems or their pain points and all these things kind of unearth and here like how wind is only listening to me she is not interested to share her idea right now so you may, so so she is more interested that's what is encouraging me to even speak so similarly it's a role reversal for you and the person with whom you are trying to find inside that's a uh, day 4 a no, uh, day day 5 is now you go back to the person of the head of department and you present this final report you wait for a day uh, allow people to fill in the data you might be lucky you might not be lucky and if you want to wait for a day or a two that's up to you if you think the data is not good enough only two or three people but that's pretty much uh, uh, i think an intellectual call that you can take uh, and once you have the final data now imagine you are having your first conversation about diversity with the head of diversity you as i mentioned this is data driven a uh, diversity and inclusion that's the topic uh, i i think i've crafted this idea and the whole thing is when i'm having my first conversation with the head of uh, diversity i have this co card i have all that personal insight i have my theory or my uh, as as they say uh, 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 initial thought process and my initial idea about diversity and if the data is backing it 
well and good if it is not then also it is well and good because then i kind of have this idea bounce with the head and then i ask her or him what what their feedback is and then maybe uh, again for them you they can connect with the with on linkedin and then they can slice and dice the data they might be interested in seeing the actual data you can share because it is anonymized so you can kind of share the questions and all the answers that has been sh- uh, given and they can kind of uh, give it to you that's in short this five day outreach program that's pretty remarkable i'm what i love about what you're doing is you're provi- if people don't have a way to navigate what they're doing they're kind of lost in the dark you're providing them the tools to not only identify what their dei starting place is you're letting people give their opinion anonymously so they feel a little bit safer in being honest right um, i mean sometimes companies are like oh yeah this this is anonymous we won't know who you are and employees don't believe that because it's internal you're a third party you're not collecting any of that data you cannot collect that data so not only is it keeping your bias neutral but it's helping people be a little more trustworthy right and then you're taking this and you're you're, you're taking that first set of data reviewing it telling people what they need to hear not necessarily what they want to hear and then helping them build that pathway to be more diverse equity inclusion i love the fact of um you know pinpointing people about working from home that is very charged right now some people say absolutely not you have to be in the office not necessarily and from a sustainability standpoint it is healthier for the environment because you're not driving to and from work and it's better for families because women can go to the office and st- you know if you're going physically into an office you need daycare daycare takes up your entire salary so it's right possible. so this is actually a betterment for society and letting people realize that things are changing and we have right. to embrace that change and adapt to it. Right. And your roadmap puts it right out there. And talking about a head of diversity, not every company can afford to have a division, but you definitely need somebody who is like your chief sustainability officer and that's part of their their pillars because tacking that role onto someone else's existing responsibilities, it's too much work. It's too much. It it won't it won't fly. And that person won't pay as much attention to it if they have other responsibilities on their desk. So highly recommend having a division of sustainability or diversity. You know, don't just tack it onto someone's existing responsibilities. But now you've talked about your five benefits. Your five benefits are awesome. I actually printed it out because that is pretty cool stuff. And um, I'll probably put that in the write-up for you so people can actually read that. Um, and the benefits for not only the company, but for the individual to grow within the company and feel seen and heard is enormous. But um, most importantly, how can people find you, hire you, bring you into their offices so they can actually accomplish this roadmap? <laughs> for me, you're asking this. For you, how do they, they <laughs> I want people to find you. They want, I want 73-bit to be huge and international. <laughs> right. So uh, the easy thing is 73bit.com. If you go to the website, all the information you will find there. That 73 is a digit and then B-I-T and then .com. So you can find everyone there. You can go on uh, LinkedIn and f- uh, search Vikram Shetty and 73bit if you put. I think I will come up uh, as your top search and you can. Uh, my, my LinkedIn is open. Anyone can message me. Uh, my email ID is Vikram at the rate 73bit.com. So yeah, those are the three ways you can reach out to me. And the way we kind of come in and kind of help you, we come at a, at a different stage. As you understand, not everyone has that capacity. Not everyone has that budget. So so we have this kind of, as I mentioned, there is a free course. When you go on it, there's a free course. So you understand how a scorecard is done. We are available to have a one-on-one consultation call to kind of break it down further for someone who wants to have a handholding, which tools to use, how to collect the data, what what could be the some sample examples of nice. a scorecard, how it might look, working with brainstorming ideas and figuring out what would work best for you what is the objective right that's that's the strategy is kind of a thing why are we even doing it what is your north star we kind of kind of help you to uh, kind of niche it down more than not like the the people who want uh, want to do it they kind of have most of the answer what we kind of do is we kind of help them navigate it like remove all the 
uh, waste and kind of help them to do the minimum thing and that can helps them to out and again if if somebody can afford it uh, like the whole process for example that five day i think i just i mentioned and kind of ask them to do that anonymous uh, uh, data collection piece they can upload yeah. the data into our application and the the scorecard can be automatically created for them so that's mm -hmm. our big uh, big uh, st strategic advantage is where we kind of are able to create this template and kind of uh, have a mechanism how to score things and have your scoring methodology and like kind of connect it and kind of present it and that's where we are kind of currently shining because uh, the space is so niche that you just can't throw an open uh, data analytical tool because uh, you can do it all your own or your ones, but you need a, a kind of a predefined template, if I may say, uh, so that uh, people don't have to do a lot of uh, heavy work or heavy lifting, as they say. Yeah. And that kind of helps you uh, to uh, uh, create that uh, whole service. Now, imagine, let's say we go step forward. We did this five days, HRI, the head of uh diversity is excited now i want to do it for all my employee i want it to be third party because then they will have this trust and they will understand yeah. how it to be done uh now but but they can't do all the program they can't ask 1000 questions to everybody and start collecting that's not possible so they they might have to kind of something like they might have to do inclusive leadership they think that if we fix the mm -hmm. leaders and then everything is top down. So uh, either most of our clients normally help with this, the, 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 this third party uh, advisors or those are our primary clients, right? So what we can do is help them to reach and connect with them. So for example, inclusive leadership can have fairness and respect, collaboration, psychological safety, culture intelligence or emotional intelligence, empowerment, insights, and trust. So these are the seven key framework for uh inclusive leadership now this is something that is available on our clients website that i'm kind of uh, because it's public data but how it is broken down how the scores are given how to uh, identify which group to collect the data from how to create a seven page eight page report what are the next recommendations to give based on their scores and stuff like that so when you have to do this comprehensive for 100 200 300 of your employees then it's not it's you can do it with excel and you can do send email and ask this question or send the data from chat but it would be very nice if they can do it on a tool where they can have all those questions and like fill in the answer and based on their designation only few questions are displayed and all and in the back end as soon as they submit they get a immediate report because the scoring is kind of predefined and they kind of work uh well very well with it so yeah uh, similarly you can do 360 degree review where you want to skip your middle management and uh, uh the the juniors can directly answer to the super bosses and mm -hmm. things of that sort. so if you want to, to have a lot of automation like on there uh, how our software kind of helps them do it and definitely that uh, we work in we work with multiple different kind of project but i uh, just don't want to overwhelm the listeners with um, too many options <laughs> no you guys you guys are um you're kind of leading the pack when it comes to this because you have you've identified so many qualities of dei that most people don't even think about and i i love the fact that you just said that you can have the junior level people answer questions to senior people because sometimes it is that middle management that's a roadblock right they don't want trouble they, right. they don't want they don't want the big boss to know that there's a problem right right and that uh, yeah that develops mistrust within the ranks and the full disclosure the credit goes to our clients so all the knowledge of whatever i'm speaking if 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 i am sounding smart about diversity it's the <laughs> whole credit goes to the clients because they educated i've been mean, doing this for last eight years now so they've been educating us and uh, throwing the structure and the formulas and the methodology is that's where we are trying to understand how it works mm -hmm. what we do is the automation bit of it and when you mention about the skip the 360 that's a very interesting product that our client have kind of designed is where 
they kind of go beyond that they do that assessment with suppliers who are in contact with that boss they do it with the outside consultants not only juniors but also their peers who are outside the companies and see how the inclusive leadership or the how the diversity piece kind of sits into so right. so so there are there is a different there are many frameworks that you can uh, pick and choose and you can design something of your own also but uh, if you are a company and you reach out to me i will point i will uh, point out to one of our clients that who do whose domain the diversity is if you are a diversity consultant or a diversity and inclusion consultant which there, there is a high demand of it because as rightly wendy mentioned there is the company comes sometimes no don't have a capacity for head of diversity so what to do so you go reach yeah. out uh, hire a consultant and do a small project don't do a big brown project you start uh, some project at 5000 gbp or 10000 gbp or uh, and see how what the result is because uh, the uh, you can talk like there is a business case to this because if someone understand business and I, I run a small business so for me uh, being resourceful is the only way to uh, be profitable and uh, be this the the people who we have uh, our team or uh, uh, people that work with us we we have team because we want to innovate and deliver product to the market that is so good that it has a big margin of profit and a trajectory of growth on growth if yeah. you don't agree to that business formula i think you should not listen to this episode <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was a joke, bad one, but that's but that's my true. point. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's been true for years that you know, if you have happy employees, the company's going to do well. If you don't treat your employees well, they're going to leave, and your company will suffer. Right, and uh, the recent event, the world change, and there are n number of case study. Uh, one of my favorite author is Simon Sinek. Uh, right, I mean, he, he start with why is like i don't know i mean it's been everyone every must have ever any one of the story that he shares is that there was a pizza company in new york and nobody was uh, 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 getting food from anywhere right the delivery system was not working but they have people they had good culture and they they want they kept the people safe the team kind of talked to each other like the bosses tell guys i don't know what to do I cannot deliver pizza. There is no, everything is shut down. We don't, we cannot, we don't fall into anything. So they became so resourceful. What do we have right now? We cannot sell our place. Nobody is using office or anything. But what they had was this pizza oven, which you can kind of, uh, uh, there was a heat component to it. So what they end up doing was they, they started buying this flat sheet and they bended it and made it as a mask shield a pizza shop delivering a shield for the oh, health nice. and safety and they made more money selling this plastic sheets and it was important and they did good to the people they did good to the society i don't think a happy culture or like if there is no way in the world that work environment was not happy i mean to throw yeah. out just a random idea and for a team to back it up. I mean, imagine they were sh chefs or they were people who make food and now they are making, I don't know, face industry, mask. face <laughs> mask or like face shields. So happy people, I don't know, happy people problem are solver. a problem solver. You, and yeah. most, most of the work is knowledge work, right? I mean, uh, I, most of the listener, I'm not, I don't think they are making widgets or they're making nuts and bolts and taking out a um, few of you maybe and uh, definitely we need them as a but i think 80% uh, of you i can make a wild guess like you are a knowledge worker you are either a consultant or or a business owner or, uh, or some kind of human uh, creative or intellectual or some kind of thinking work that you are doing and if you are doing that uh, your people need 8 hours of sleep that is uh, <laughs> You yeah. people can't work on weekends, and this is all given. How many companies follow it? I mean, I can go on and on, but uh, I don't think there's a 
there is no debate if your people are happy they will have space and they will have uh, encouragement to bring ideas to the seniors that ideas has that potential backing from their leadership to match it to their vision and innovation and money at the end of yeah. it yeah no i love the idea with the uh, pizza oven face shields <laughs> because happy employees problem solved unhappy right. employees would have been like well i'm gonna i guess i'll leave because you can't pay me they made more money making the shields <laughs> that's how you prop that's a happy company and that's a profitable company and they made more sales than ever so that's a perfect example so on that Vikram, thank you so much for coming today you're you're doing amazing work 73 bit is doing amazing work keep it going make the world a better place and we will catch you soon check him out he's also got his own uh web podcast so um check out Vikram. you can find him through my linkedin through my i'll tag him great guy to follow you guys take care. Vikram, thank you so much for coming today. I do really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you have uh, liked this episode and if you are still listening, go to 73bit.com and on top right, you will find free course. Take that course free of cost. Thank you so much. And Wendy, it has been a pleasure uh, to be a part of this show. Thank you so much, guys. Um, check them out. They're doing good work. So I'm Wendy Nystrom, host with Environmental Social Justice. You guys take care and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.